So arguably this season's biggest sleeper hit, your boy Conming has a officially concluded, and with it I mean I think the community in general is hoping and praying for a season 2 sometime because even though volume 1 as our boy literally says has ended, there's still so much more story that they can tell, but if for whatever reason this was all we ever got in the anime, it's not like they leave us off on a, okay, she just enters the big stage and we don't know what happens next, it's left open ended, but at the very least they tie it together both with this very fake idol group finally becoming who they've wanted to be for so long, while also giving our girl the victory and confidence that she's going to make it because of her amazing strategist. The thing that I come out appreciating about this show, and specifically an episode like this the most, is how real it actually felt. Despite having someone who was pulled from, you know, the Three Kingdoms, that romance of the Three Kingdoms, using his back in the day military tactics to basically get the W with music. I like the fact that they don't ignore what is real, and that is, there is no way either Aiko or this group would have succeeded if it wasn't for the help of both, you know, the manipulation of the masses in terms of making artificial things for radio, things like that, but also having someone who can pull off maneuvers to get 100,000 likes in a single day. I'm going to start with this group first, because when you look at a couple episodes back, which I had a very different type of review because I compared it to the real world of, you know, passion doesn't pay the bills. You can look at someone like Karasawa and say, okay, in this episode, he has a big change of heart. He's going to let them play for real. But here's the thing with it. It reminds me of big bands, right? You can have the singer leave after establishing some amazing things, whether it's ACDC, right? If you throw another singer and launch a massive world tour, ACDC is going to sell out no matter what, because their tickets will go like hotcakes because of that. But if you take the singer of ACDC, who's no longer with them, and have him pop up, he's not going to sell as many tickets as the band name ACDC. So when it comes to them now playing real instruments and treating it more as they want to, the reason that's going to work is because of Conming's interference plus their established fan base. It's because there's so many times where you have real bands where, you know, they're very popular, they switch singers, even if people don't like the new singer as much, they do better than that singer who left because ultimately the name has recognition. And that's very similar to what this group has going on, is that yes, they're going to be able to play what they want and perform in a real setting, but ultimately it's still a business and the reason they're going to succeed is because of that pre-built name that was built on, you know, four songs faking their performances on stage because everything is a business and that's how it was treated. And then mix in Conming doing his kind of return of 100,000 likes, that's ultimately why it worked out. It's basically saying that here's the thing, passion alone one in a million people might make passion a financially successful career and they'll never have to sell their soul, they'll never have to treat it like a business, where your boy Conming said, no, we're going to show you that reality is depressing. Even if it had a hopeful end, it's not like they excused and said, you know, Karasawa was completely wrong and he was, you know, he was regretting everything he did. He understood why he did what he did. It's a mixture of his own feeling like a failure, wanting to see a group like them succeed because they have talent. Yes, he made some mistakes, he feels, but it's not like they regret everything he did. That's why they actually went and apologized and still wanted his help. They both kind of made their own mistakes, but it's because of a lot of things happening at the right moment that they got their big breakthrough in a real genuine way. And that's really interesting to me because I can't recall the last time I've seen a show movie do something that real while giving it that hopefulness, not because, you know, the world is pretty and... If you put your mind to it, dreams are always going to come real. No, that's not how the world works, unfortunately. And this show knows that and just really ran with that. And then when it came with Eka, right, the reason she succeeded isn't because she has, you know, the perfect talent. She was good from day one. She doubted in herself so bad. So it's a mixture of having the right people next to you that support you and bring you back up when you fall down, but also having someone who can literally pull the most genius tactical maneuvers and most people aren't going to have a strategist like that by their side. So I like how this show can be, hey, we're going to be real, but we're also not going to try to bullshit you and say this is going to happen magically in your own life or this is how the world can actually work. No, it's anime and we can have everything fall into place in the perfect fashion because it is a story, but we're not going to try to say that the reason, you know, you know, every band out there or every, you know, artist out there can just do what we just did here and they'll be fine financially stable and they don't have to sell their soul. 
that ain't reality and that's not how it actually works. So I'm glad that they have a real message underneath that kind of hopeful atmosphere that they delivered for this kind of final episode. Truthfully, I wasn't expecting this band to stick together in the way that they did, so I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised by the fact that Kanming wasn't someone who not only just destroyed Nanami so Eiko could win, but he saved that entire group and producer to make sure that they had a second chance because if we're going to piggyback off your success, we're not going to completely leave you in the dust and it's just you're going to have a bigger hill to climb than the quick one that you were attempting. But in terms of the actual like performance on both sides, I actually thought we weren't going to see them perform. I thought it was just going to be Aiko given the victory. I mean, Dreamer was fantastic. I'm glad we got to hear the full thing, seeing her just light up the crowd going from being absolutely despised to having a cult following in the making there, to then even seeing that small crowd they played almost like they're back at the clubs, but this time they realize that even if this is our last performance where people are gonna look at us, we'd rather go work a day job and perform as a side hobby than what we were doing, and a lot of people end up in that predicament. But I like the fact that because of their own talent and because of Kanming's careful interference, they were able to regroup there, maybe not as successfully as they would have if they would have won the 100,000 like contest, but still enough to give them an honest to go boost because they've had such a dedicated fan base for so long, that kind of revival hashtag, it makes a lot of sense because once you already have an established name, people are going to recognize it even if it sounds different on the radio or playing on YouTube, things like that. I was actually very happy with the production, there was a lot of wide shots because you had hundreds if not thousands of people in the crowd. So ultimately you can't animate them as perfectly as you can as the foreground characters. But there was quite a few shots where I had to say, like, despite seeing so many wide shots with clearly lesser details in the crowd, I thought they did a much more artistic job making it pleasant to look at than what I'm typically used to seeing in a show like this when they do have so many crowds, whether they CGI it or they just, you know, loosely draw little stick characters in the background. But your boy decided to really show us a pretty fun way to make it feel like it works and it fills in the environment without it feeling like a eye distraction or anything like that. But it was just nice. I was glad to see both sides got a pretty equal time to feel like their stories concluded here, but then their new stories open up. So it's like one book ends and another book begins. So it's one of those things where I could easily wait years for a season two, and if for some reason they decide not to do a season two, I could still recommend the show and I could still rewatch the show and feel like I had a conclusive enough time that it doesn't feel wasted, especially given that final conversation between the two and them feeling like they kind of both have done the impossible and they feel happy with where they're at and the sky's the limit as they tie together that little spiritual scene to really give him a sense of closure himself. I mean, overall, this show was pretty much as close to a 10 out of 10 as I think it needed to be. It knew exactly how weird to be. It knew exactly how funny, dramatic, and musical it needed to be. And it really does feel like a staple of this season's best anime that you would recommend to people, whether they're newer or older into the anime fandom, because it just was confident and goddamn charming. It just had a personality that radiated off the charts, and I'm excited to see if we'll ever get a season two someday but if this is all we get i'm very happy to leave it off here but thoughts if you have any down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you do around here so next time everyone please take care and have a good one